With my test bench upgraded with the i7-13700K, I wanted to do a retest of my RTX 4090 so I can give you guys some updated results and also to see if I had held back the GPU in my initial review since it was paired with the slower CPU. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. Recently, I made a video showcasing my upgraded test bench with the parts I had used along with doing an overview of the MSI Z790 Carbon Wi-Fi that MSI had sent over. If you guys are interested in seeing that, link for the video will be in the description. One of the main reasons why I wanted to upgrade the test bench with a faster CPU is because when I had reviewed my RTX 4090 a couple months ago, I felt like I wasn't showing you guys the best results I could because I was using a Ryzen 7 5800X CPU. Now don't get me wrong, the 5800X is still a pretty fast CPU, and if you have one, you probably are going to be set for quite some time. However, when doing a GPU review, you want to eliminate as many bottlenecks as you can to allow the graphics card to fully stretch its legs, which will therefore allow you guys to see its full capabilities or realize its full potential. That's why I was prompted on doing a re-review for you guys as I want to try my best to always give you guys the best data. What I did after upgrading my test bench was that I had benchmarked the original 12 games I had tested in my initial review and along with that I also tested 9 more additional titles so that we can have a wide variety of data to look at and analyze. So we've got a lot of data to go over, so I'll cut the preamble short and outline the test system specs. Starting off with the AMD system, for our CPU we have the Ryzen 7 5800X which I have overclocked and tuned using PBO2 and Curve Optimizer. It's paired with 4 8GB sticks of Patriot Viper Steel DDR4 memory for a total of 32GB and I have it running at 3800 Mega Transfer CL14. The CPU cooler is an Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360 AIO. The motherboard is an MSI X570 Unify. On the Intel side, we have the Core i7-13700KF, which has been tuned using turbo ratios. Basically, its all-core OC is at 5.4GHz and the single-core boosts are at 5.8GHz. For the RAM, we've got 32GB of Patriot Viper Venom RGB DDR5, which I have running at 6400 Mega Transfers CL32. The motherboard is an MSI Z790 Carbon Wi-Fi. Both systems had their CPUs cooled by an Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360 RGB CPU cooler, with the fans and pump running at 100%. For the game storage drive, we have a 4TB Corsair MP600 LPX Gen 4 NVMe SSD. The graphics card is an MSI RTX 4090 Gaming X Trio. And as for the power supply, we have an EVGA 1000 G3. I know there will be some people asking why I'm not using DDR4 with the Intel system and why I have both of them overclocked, so I want to address that. Basically, this video isn't meant to be a CPU review. What I'm trying to show you guys is how much faster the RTX 4090 can run when it's paired with a tuned Intel Raptor Lake CPU as opposed to using it on a tuned Zen 3 based system. If I was trying to do a CPU review here, I would have left both CPUs at stock and used the same DDR4 kit for both of them, but that's not the point of this video. As for the games, I tested 3 resolutions, 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. Most of my focus on this video will be at 4K and 1440p. The 1080p results are there, but at that point we're benchmarking CPUs, so I'm not even going to bother explaining them. 4K is the resolution that I think is the most appropriate for the RTX 4090 anyways, since buyers in this segment will be pairing the card with a display that's configured for this resolution, unless they're targeting 240Hz plus at 1440p. Alright, with all of that out of the way, it's time we jumped into the gaming benchmarks. For our first game, we have Final Fantasy XIV and Walker Benchmark. I threw this game in there because it's fairly popular, and MMOs are generally quite CPU bound, so I wanted to see what kind of an impact we'd see here on the 4090's performance. At 4K, we still see a 15% performance difference for the average FPS, and our 1% lows do see a larger difference of around 27%. The margins at 1440p are even larger, 20% and 31% respectively, 
but that's to be expected as we go down in resolution, we're more CPU bound. Moving on, and we have Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. This is a pretty popular and fun RTS game that I recommend checking out. At 4K, we can see that the 13700KF is about 13% faster than the 5800X when it comes to the average FPS. However, where we really see a large difference is when it comes to the 1% lows. A massive 45% improvement. So even though at 4K, we're generally GPU bound, and you'll find average FPS differences to be minuscule compared to lower resolutions, 1% lows are still greatly impacted, and that's also very important. I'd argue that it's even more important than average FPS. Take a look at the 1440p data, where now we see a massive 55% improvement for the average FPS, and our margins for the 1% lows are still the same, in fact they haven't really changed at all, so it may not be as smooth as the average FPS figures may imply. Up next, and we have Total War Warhammer 3, and this game is very interesting. It's also an RTS title, but behaves quite differently compared to Bannerlord. At 4K, we can see both configurations are basically offering the same performance with the 1% lows, slightly better on the 5800X. At 1440p, we can see that while average FPS figures are still the same, the 1% lows on the Intel system are far worse. A 53% difference, which is very significant. And I did notice quite a bit of stuttering on the 13700KF. Now, apparently this game has been known to not play so nicely with Intel's hybrid Big Little design, and there is a fix out there that you can apply in the user config text file. But since I'm using the Xbox Store version of the game, I therefore don't have access to that file. But these results are still valid because it shows you an out-of-the-box experience uh, for this game, and on an Intel system, it just doesn't play nicely, which is kind of funny because it's an Intel-sponsored title. Forza Horizon 5 is next. At 4K, the 13700KF offers 13% better performance when taking a look at the average FPS, but our 1% lows are slightly lower when compared to the AMD configuration, but that's margin of error stuff. At 1440p, we see the average FPS margin grow to 19%, and the 1% lows are basically the same now. Considering this is an open world racing title, the CPU does play a major role here. Still, whether you're gaming with the 5800X or the 13700K, I'd have to say both systems still deliver a great experience. Gears 5 is another Microsoft title we're going to be taking a look at, and it's kind of astonishing to see how at 4K, both systems are virtually identical. But then, as we drop the resolution to 1440p, we see a massive 38% performance uplift when going from the 5800X to the 13700KF. And even the 1% lows are better by about 24%, which is pretty significant. Horizon Zero Dawn is a game that I've noticed seems to love AMD hardware. In my 4090 review, I noticed that at lower resolutions, the RX 6800 XT was nearly as fast as my 3090. Here we're seeing a similar story, where at 4K the 13700KF is just slightly ahead, but not by any noticeable margin, and at 1440p they're again showing similar averages, but 1% lows are considerably better on the 13700KF for both resolutions, so that's something to take into account. F1 2022 is the second racing title in our list of games, and this game seems to love the 13700KF. At 4K we're looking at a 22% uplift when comparing average FPS, and our 1% lows have improved by around 15%. At 1440p, the average FPS margin grew to 26%, but interestingly, the gap for our 1% lows has narrowed down to 11%. The next game we're going to be taking a look at is Control, though our discussion here will be swift as this game shows performance across all three resolutions to be virtually identical, but I think the reason why the 4090 wasn't able to show its full potential is not because we're CPU limited, but because this game has a hard cap at 240 FPS. I tried looking through various config files and I couldn't find a way to disable it, so if someone knows, let me know in the comments below. In Hitman 3, when playing at 4K, we can see that the 13700KF provides a 6% performance uplift for the average FPS, but 1% lows don't really improve at all. But at 1440p, though, we can see that we have a pretty major CPU bottleneck get introduced, where now we're looking at a whopping 36% difference in favor of the 13700KF, but 1% lows aren't that much better. I'd argue for a game like this that isn't necessarily very fast-paced, you'd have a great time with either configuration and wouldn't really be able to tell the difference anyways. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is another game that behaves similarly to Hitman 3, where at 4K the margins for the average FPS are only a meager 7% and 8% 
10% for the 1% lows. However, at 1440p, we see just how much faster the 4090 is with a faster CPU, yielding a difference of around 37% for the average FPS, but 1% lows are still show a small gap. Red Dead Redemption 2 is using the Vulkan API, and here we can see it's primarily GPU bound. At 4K, both configurations show nearly the same performance for the 4090. At 1440p, there is an increase of 7% for the average FPS, and an even larger difference of 17% for the 1% lows. Cyberpunk 2077 is a game that is quite demanding and even brings a fast GPU like the 4090 down to its knees, which is kind of impressive to see. Here the game really couldn't care what CPU you're using as both configurations show nearly the same performance at 4K. At 1440p though, we do see a bump of 8% for the average FPS, but a very large 55% uplift for the 1% lows. This is actually a pretty big deal when you think about it because at 4K, most people might end up using upscaling tech like DLSS, and when you use DLSS, since you're rendering at a lower internal resolution, then strong CPU performance will come into play there. Stay tuned because I do have a video coming up addressing this in the near future. Halo Infinite is a game that I had such high hopes for, but ultimately got let down by the lack of features and the piss poor monetization. I haven't played this game since like a year ago, but I've been hearing from people that it's in a better state, so I'll have to check it out again for myself. As for performance, I've never really had any issues with this game, and we can see at 4K it delivers a good experience regardless of which platform you're using. What I found really interesting was that at 1440p, we see average FPS figures go up significantly with the advantage on the Intel side, however the 5800X is 18% better when it comes to the 1% lows, whereas at 4K the 13700KF was 16% better, and remember these results were attained from an average of 3 runs. At 1080p, you'll notice the same situation where it's way better average FPS on the 13700KF, but 1% lows are much worse, which may not make it seem that much smoother. Moving on, and we have Doom Eternal. At this point, this game is just comical to include because it's giving you such ridiculously high FPS figures that, I mean, I don't even know if it's worth talking about. But just imagine if every game coming out was optimized as well as Doom Eternal was. The PC hardware world would be in, in a much better place. At 4K, there was really no performance difference for either configuration when using the RTX 4090, but at 1440p, we do see average FPS in favor of the 13700KF, but honestly, who cares? We're talking about average FPS figures above 500 now. Next up, we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 2022. At 4K, using ultra settings, we see that performance between the two configurations is nearly identical. However, at 1440p, we see a 4% uplift when using the 13700K with our 4090. I feel like the next time I include this game, I'm probably going to be using low or normal settings, also known as competitive settings, as that is a configuration most players are going to be using anyways, and I think that's where we'll see a larger performance improvement. But for now, these are the numbers I've got, and if you're someone who's going to be playing this game with nearly everything maxed out, then you don't really have to be worrying about a CPU bottleneck. CSGO is the next competitive FPS title we have, and at 4K, I'm a bit surprised to see that we're primarily GPU bound. Well, I guess the ultra settings also come into play here, and I was also thinking maybe I should have used low settings for this one too. I don't know, you guys let me know in the comments down below if I should just stick with competitive settings when benchmarking games like CSGO or COD. At 1440p, we do see a difference when it comes to the average FPS, but again, it's one of those situations where you have to ask yourself if you're even going to be noticing a difference. The next game on our list is The Witcher 3 with its next-gen update. Please note I have enabled ray tracing with this game. Clearly, CDPR still has some optimization work to do with this game. At 4K, the 4090 delivered the same performance with both CPUs, but I don't think it's because it was being CPU bottlenecked. GPU usage I noticed wasn't even above 90%, so I feel like something else is going on. At 1440p, we can see that performance with the 5800X doesn't really change, but with the 13700K and the 4090 config, they offer 49% better performance when it comes to the average FPS, but 1% lows are still very poor. 
I did try this game with DLSS and frame generation, and I gotta say it made the experience way better, but I'm not sure how I feel about having to use those features or rather rely on them to save performance on a title as old as this one, even if it does have a good ray tracing implementation. And Rainbow Six Extraction, the 4090 is showing the same level of performance with the 13700KF that it did with the 5800X, which means that in this game, once we're at 4K, the CPU matters less. It's only at 1440p where we start to see a difference, but it's nothing major, just 3% for the average and 18% for the 1% lows. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is another title where performance at 4K is very similar between the two configurations, so the 4090 wasn't even being held back by the 5800X here. At 1440p, however, we do see an 11% improvement with the 13700KF, but 1% lows are better by 7%, essentially telling us that past 1440p you're primarily GPU limited, which is a good thing because that means in my initial review the 4090 wasn't being held back too much. Next up we have Far Cry 6. At 4K, like many of the other previous titles we looked at, while there is a performance uplift with the 13700KF, for the 4090, it's nothing drastic, we're only talking about an 8% improvement, and despite there being a larger 14% increase for the 1% lows, we're talking about just 11 FPS here. At 1440p is where we see the gap widened by a lot, 41% for the average FPS, and 49% for the 1% lows. The last game we're going to be taking a look at is Watch Dogs Legion, and this game is very intriguing because at 4K we're seeing a massive 57% uplift for the 4090 when it's paired with the i7-13700KF for the average FPS, and 1% lows have gone up by 50%. I didn't expect this game to be so CPU bound even at 4K, so I'm glad I included this in my list of titles, but I feel like it's kind of an anomaly. Maybe AMD really has to do some work here to optimize this game for its CPUs. So now that we've gone over all the games, it's time we take a look at our 21 game average. At 4K, which is the resolution that the 4090 is most suited for, we can see that our graphics card got an uplift of around 8% for the average FPS, and our 1% lows saw a slightly larger uplift at 10%. What I will say about this is that I think we're starting to get to the point now where eventually it could be the next generation, it could be the one after that, where you will see the CPU start to matter even at 4K. Before this generation, even with something like an RTX 3080, if you went from a Zen 2 to a Zen 3 CPU, the performance uplift at 4K would be minuscule, so the consensus was that if you're gaming at 4K, you probably won't even have to upgrade your CPU for a while. Right now, if you're on a Ryzen 5000 series CPU, or you're on an Intel 10th or 11th gen CPU, and you decide to upgrade to an RTX 4080 or 4090 and are gaming at 4K, you're probably still fine. However, once the next generation rolls around, and if we continue to see these 50% plus performance uplifts for the high end, then eventually you'll start seeing reviewers talk about CPU bottlenecks even at 4K. I mean, we've just taken a look at an average, but there were a handful of games where the margins were greater than 10%. When we shift our focus to 1440p, we can see that at this resolution, the 4090 was clearly held back by the 5800X, as the difference here for the average FPS is 16%, so it doubled from 4K. And here's the thing, not too long ago, people used to treat 1440p the same way we treat 4K right now, where at 1440p, people would say that your CPU doesn't really matter because you're going to be very GPU bound. However, we're at the point now where at least 7 games have shown differences larger than 30%, which is pretty significant. Soon you'll see these kinds of differences start to appear at 4K regularly. The thing is, you want a GPU bottleneck as opposed to a CPU bottleneck in your games, especially when you're dealing with a high-end graphics card. If you've paid like $1600 plus for your GPU, and it's sitting idle most of the time because you've got a slow CPU that just can't keep it fed, then you've essentially wasted your money. So that's why it's crucial to understand where you have a CPU bottleneck and why you should try to alleviate it. After conducting these benchmarks and looking at these results, I feel like I've definitely made the right decision to upgrade the test bench with a faster CPU. I've gotta say I'm quite impressed with the performance on Intel's 13th gen Raptor Lake CPUs, and more specifically the 13700KF. 
this is one blazing fast CPU, and if you're someone who is looking at a combo like this because they're a competitive gamer who plays at like 1440p to 40Hz, then this is definitely the way to go. This has allowed me to show you guys the 4D90 in a better spotlight, as it had the opportunity to showcase its capabilities better by being paired with the faster CPU. This now also opens the door for me to do other tests in the future, whether it'd be other faster GPUs, test out different settings, configurations, and various other features. I do have some interesting videos planned for the near future, so stay tuned as you won't want to miss those. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.